get ready for the countdown. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Do you want to build a snowman? Come on, let's go and play. I never see you anymore. Come out the door. It's like you've gone away. What is snowball sampling? Snowball sampling is a non-probability sampling technique where existing study subjects recruit future subjects from among their acquaintances. Snowball sampling is one of the three main types of qualitative sampling. Another two types are purposeful sampling and quota sampling. It is called snowball sampling because, in theory, once you have the ball rolling, it picks up more snow along the way and becomes larger and larger. What are the patterns of snowball sampling? There are three patterns of snowball sampling, which is Linear snowball sampling, exponential non discriminative snowball sampling, and exponential discriminative snowball sampling. The first one is linear snowball sampling. It is the formation of a sample group that starts with only one subject. The subject will then provide only one referral. The referral is then recruited into the sample group and he or she will also provide only one referral. This pattern continues until the sample group is fully formed. The second one is exponential non-discriminative snowball sampling. It is the formation of a sample group that starts with only one subject. The first subject will then provide multiple referrals. Each new referral is explored until primary data from sufficient amount of samples are collected. And lastly, exponential discriminative snowball sampling. It is the formation of a sample group that starts with only one subject. The subject will then give multiple referrals. However, only one new subject is recruited among the referrals. The choice of a new subject is based on the aim and objectives of the study. Steps involved in this snowball sampling First step, identify the potential subjects in the population. Usually, only one or two subjects can be formed initially. Second step, ask those subjects to recruit other people. These steps goes on until the needed sample size is formed. Why choose snowball sampling? The sampling method is used if the sample for the study is very rare or is limited to a very small subgroup of the population. It is also used for the hard-to-reach population. Yes. If you don't 
article The abuse potential of the synthetic cannabinoid nebulon by Mark Ewer and Emmanuel St. Arnold Trump This article explains about nebulon which is synthetic cannabinoid drugs that have the potential of being abused by certain people in Canada. This article also explains on how the survey is being conducted to collect real, reliable information regarding the nebulon abuse which is currently ill-defined by physicians. There are many methods uh, used to study and investigate nebulon abuse. Methods involved including scientific literature, popular press, internet database, provincial database as well as focused interview with the medical professional and law enforcement agencies. This wide range of sources help to provide different levels of information and perspective, painting a global picture that probably reflects the current attitude towards nebulon abuse in Canada. The diversity of the sources will help to decrease the probability of bias, especially when using only one specific reliable source. There are three objectives, which is the first one is to study and understand the abuse of the synthetic cannabinoid nebulon. The second one is to investigate nebulon abuse by people in Canada. And last but not least, is to study the possibility of selection bias in nebulon abuse cases. Method The researchers used the snowball sampling to detect signals that nebulon was being used or reported as a drug of abuse. The place that they choose to conduct the research study mainly in Canada where over the past 8 years, there has been a steady increase of nebulon prescription. The targeted people were approached by organizing interview based on a series of referral among people related in various ways. This type of non-random sampling using snowball methodology was employed to identify subjects for interviews. The researchers are more focused on the situation of nebulon abuse and the information was retrieved from those who were most likely to have contact with individuals using nebulon rather than focusing hard to risk population of drug user or potential abuser themselves. The targeted field of expertise for the interviews included law enforcement, drug diversion, cancer and palliative care, drug dependent treatment as well as medical cannabis at work HC. Limitations The main limitation mentioned in the research paper is that as for studies of other drugs of abuse, the events of interest are in the main isolated and hidden. As for the researchers difficulties to access the hidden population, to counter this situation and potential problem that will arise by increasing the chances of capturing relevant information was noble recruitment. The strategy for the sampling did not target nebulon users directly, it targeted professionals who might have been in contact with nebulon users. However, there are some limitations while using sombo sampling that need to be considered when interpreting the result of the study. Literature regarding this sampling method has underlined specific type of bias including social distance. It is the probability of one individual being connected to another is as a function of the social distance between them. Next, false field bias. Certain characteristics such as popularity can confer greater likelihood of targeting certain individuals. Snowball sampling for the interviews does not allow conclusions to be drawn regarding the rates or risk of nebulon abuse in Canada, but it can act as an indicator of the overall situation across the country. Conclusion 
In conclusion, this novel sampling used in this article is defined as a non-random sample of individuals drawn from finite population. This type of sampling work as chain referral. Advantages The first one, the chain referral process allows the researcher to reach populations that are difficult to sample when using other sampling methods. The second one, the process is cheap, simple, and cost efficient. And the third one, the sampling technique needs little planning and fewer workforce compared to other sampling techniques. Disadvantages The first one, the researcher has little control over the sampling method. The subjects that the researcher can obtain rely mainly on the previous subject that were observed. The second one is representative of the sample is not guaranteed. The researcher has no idea of the true distributions of the populations and of the sample. And last but not least, the sampling bias is also a fear of researchers when using the sampling technique. Initial subjects tend to nominate people that they know well. Because of this, it is highly possible that the subjects share the same traits and characteristics.